In this unscripted student support video, I'm going to help one of my students create a bendy noodle arm for her robot that she's modeled here. This will allow you to bend geometry like this, which is quite intuitive, and it sort of stays put at one of the ends over there, and you can orientate it whichever way you want. It's quite a lot of fun. And if you grab the other end of it, you're actually able to make it swim around your scene like an eel and I think that's pretty awesome this is not for animators this is aimed at modelers there's no rig here this is just done simply using a CV curve tool with a curve warp on it you are unable to parent details to it it only works on combined geometry it's not as versatile as if you had done a full rig okay so let me clean this scene up I'll add the background sphere to a new layer and temporarily turn that off and I'll add the extra geometry to a new layer and turn that off as well we are going to want to move the robot away from the center of the grid it's very important that we have our grid easy to access for this um, my students combined the arms here I'm going to do them one by one so I'm going to hit separate and I'm actually going to delete the other ones we are going to need to reduplicate them once they have had their curve line attached to them so that's looking pretty good there let's immediately delete history edit delete or by type history modify center pivot modify freeze transformations I would recommend having those three buttons on your shelf with control shift I'm going to put this arm to the middle of the grid now I did separate it and I'm going to have to recombine it because of all these other elements here again the professional way of doing this would be to rig it you can't even with this method use the constrain to point on poly or parent or anything like that it just doesn't work with this method so you do need to combine everything like this so hit combine on that let's mesh combine center pivot again and now I'm going to space bar to my top view if you lose all four views click on your four views over there and make sure you centered pivot and W for move move this over to the middle of your grid now you're gonna have to hold X for x-ray on the keyboard to make sure that this is snapped exactly to the middle of the grid like this it's super important that you centered pivot and that your mesh is in the middle of the grid like that hopefully in a straight line next it's going to move this robot out of the way so i can see my views clearly so i'm going to space bar now to my front view over here and i'm going to put this line um, in the middle of my grid i don't think you have to move it vertically but i will i'm just going to hold x for x-ray again and move this down to the middle of the grid so it's center pivot and the pivot it's right in the middle of the grid like that I've held X so it snaps to grid and again just to make sure this is all perfectly going to be okay delete history center pivot free transformations and this will cause less errors later on next let's go to create curve tools CV curve tool we're going to need to create a line alongside this and move it to the middle later we're going to hold X for x-ray on the keyboard so our points snap to the grid I'm going to hold this for a very long time I usually start my line above where the geometry ends so it's easy to click on later I don't think it matters which end you start on I'm just going to start from the top and work down I would recommend spacing out your curve points. You don't need to have them every centimeter down your geometry. Keep them fairly spread out like this. So maybe at the end, you might want a little bit more intricacy if uh, I think this is supposed to be like a medical robot or something. And so I would actually kind of maybe just give it a little bit more at the end like this for a bit more precision. Great, now the geometry, the student has subdivided this uh, with these bits like that. I would recommend going a bit further and actually adding some more edge loops to this. So I'm just gonna to go to my double click on my edge loop tool, which is mesh tools. Oh, make sure you make modeling tabs. That's mesh tools, insert edge loop, double click on that. And I want multiple edge loops, but only one, then close that down. And I'm just gonna split this up. This should now be enough divisions. Whoops, undo to get going. It's important that you add your divisions before you attach this line to your geometry or you're gonna have a hard time. Great, once you've done that, again, just to be safe, let's delete history. This is a very sort of sensitive thing that we're doing. And I'm gonna space bar back to my perspective view. So let's click on our curve in our perspective view. And if you hit W for move, you'll see the pivot isn't in the middle of your line. It's in the middle of the grid. So let's do center pivot. And then we need to move our line exactly to the middle of the grid. To help us do that, we'll space bar to our top view, hold X. Now you won't be able to see the line from the top view, which is why you have to hit W for move and make sure that the pivot is actually parented because you won't be able to see that from the top view. Now hold X for X-ray and snap this line to the exact middle of your grid. 
which should also be the exact middle of the noodle arm that you're trying to animate. Next, we're gonna to want to select both your line and your noodle arm. If you drag select over both of them, it should automatically select them in the right order where the curve is white and the geometry is green. If you wanna do them one by one, you have to select the curve first, then the geometry. It's important that you choose them in that order. Next, go to, in the model link menu, deform curve warp. When you do this, the line will turn upside down just to be annoying. And let's test that this has worked. You're gonna to need to find an exposed part of your curve line to edit this. So you cannot move this geometry anymore. If you click this geometry and try and move it, nothing will happen because it's attached to the line. So let's click on the line. If you cannot click on the line because it's completely enveloped by your geometry, you might need to hit four on the keyboard and zoom right the way in to select the line. But then even again, that might still be a challenge. If you cannot click on your line still, I'd recommend at the top of your Maya, click on this button that says select object by type and you can unclick on this diamond shape, which means you cannot select geometry anymore. You can only select curves, which is useful. Next, you're gonna to need to right click on your curve line and go to control vertex. Now, if your line is inside the geometry and let's say you've hit four and you still right click to go to control vertex, it still might try and select the vertices of the geometry, which is really annoying. So if you're still having that issue, it may be a good time to go to X-ray shading. So go to shading, X-ray. And if you click on this button here, which is select by component type, and then change this to select whole components and unclick on select point components and click on the line, this should now enable you to move it. So that should help you um, select your line and the points on it in whichever way you can ideally leave it leave a little bit exposed like i did and you haven't got to worry about all this faff at the top and just simply go to right click control vertex so the next thing we need to do is to control which end is unmovable and which end is movable so at the moment if i click on this tip of the noodle arm here and move it it actually moves the bottom of the arm away from the bottom of the curve. This will cause a problem when trying to orientate the arm later on. So we need to sort this out. So first of all, we need to flip the arm. This will fix the problem. So if you click on the curve line inside your geometry like this, and then simply go to your attribute editor, go to curve warp one tab, and you're just gonna need to click on flip axis now if i go to the control vertex at the bottom and move the bottom around you can see it doesn't actually want to follow this anymore it just simply does that which is good so now to make this more intuitive set it up so that you lock the length by going to your curves menu at the top and click lock length now when you move the tip of the arm it all sticks together like this and so it seems to be like parented properly to the points, which means you can move this around and this top of the arm up here remains sort of stuck in space, which is really useful. And so you can have this point swishing around like that and it's good. Before you start playing around with this, it's really important that you, if I undo this, keep this perfectly straight and unedited and completely unmodified just for now while we duplicate this. It's best to duplicate your arms while they are perfectly vertical rather than later on this, otherwise you get some glitches. So while this arm is still perfectly straight like this, to duplicate the arm, my student needs six arms because that's how she rolls. And so we're gonna need to click on the geometry now. So if you go to the top and make sure your geometry is clickable, click on it. And we're gonna need to duplicate special. You can't just do control D because it doesn't copy the curve with it. So do edit duplicate special options box and in here make sure your settings look like mine do and you have ticked duplicate input graph tick that and then hit duplicate special i'm going to do this four more times now so let's put our duplicate special button on our shelf i'm going to do Control shift edit duplicate special uh, on the shelf like that and i'm going to do one two three four there should now be four noodle arms all in the same place remember to move these out of the way you can't click on the actual geometry to move it. You must instead click on the curve. So click on your curve and simply move that out of the way if you have multiple arms to work with. And so you can come back to those later on. So now let's attach this arm to the robot. I'm gonna delete these other ones because uh, I don't need them anymore. So to move the arm, you have to click on the curve and move the curve over to 
the socket like that. If you're having issues, this, you might want to use all four views at the same time just to help you orientate this around. Also, if you come out of X-ray mode for a minute, so shading X-ray, you'll notice that when we flipped the uh, axis on the arm, it did go, um, it inverted the normals as well. So if you just click on the geometry for a minute and go to mesh display reverse, that fixes that issue. If you've got an issue where you cannot get the bottom of the arm to move around like this and stay attached at the top, and it seems to be doing the opposite at the bottom, even if you have gone to flip axis, you may also need to go to curves and reverse direction. So if you hit reverse direction, it will actually also flip that around. So with a mixture of reverse direction and flip axis, you should be able to get it set up in such a way that when you go to control vertex from the bottom and move the tip of the noodle arm, it moves like this. So you're now free to set this up to the angle that you want. Remember, if you move it back on itself, it kinks up kind of like you would expect like a ribbon to work underwater or something like that. It's hard to explain, but if it gets all kinked up, just stretch it back out either with the tip or with a mid vertex like this and just to select those. You may also be a good idea to use soft select, but uh, soft select is B for Bravo on the keyboard and hold B and click and drag with your mouse to change the rest of the vertices. Be careful not to make your brush size for this bigger than the top of the arm or you'll move that out of its socket if you're not careful as well. Have a go at doing something like this. And you might want to just turn um, X-ray mode back on so that you can see where your points are on the inside. If you keep selecting your arm like I'm doing here, you can go to your layers tab, make a new layer and set this to R for reference or T for template if you want to see through it. And you, you're still able to control the vertices like this without accidentally clicking on the geometry anymore. I'm now going to do this uh, six more times with the rest of the arms. To add geometry to a layer, simply select your geometry, right click on your layer and click add selected objects. This allows you to click on the curves very easily to move into position. If you can't see what point you're trying to click on to move it, instead of just clicking in the dark, it's best to just drag select and it will automatically select whatever curve vertex is in the area. And I would highly recommend doing most of your noodly arm editing with soft select enabled like I have here, so that soft select is at least a third of the size of the arm. And when you're ready to see your geometry again, simply click on the T for templates icon over here in your layers and turn that off. And you can see what you've done. So if this is a medical robot and there's a person on an operating table in front of it, it would be, I guess, doing all this stuff with its arms like that. I'm not flexing, but I only learned this about an hour ago and I'm really impressed with what you're able to do with it. This is a really cool tool. Hopefully this helps some of you. See you next time.